So Adam, uh, you know, you guys, you and I have been friends for a little while and, you know, I always hear you drop the, you know, that word storyboarding. And, uh, and it's, it's very interesting because I, uh, I would love to learn more about how, because everybody can use this, like, especially from young engineer or architect on a storyboard of how internally you guys, you know, plan and deal. It's almost like training. How do you deal with the client? Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah. So I'm using at the moment storyboarding as a technique to sort of train and coach junior leaders, project leaders and team leaders at ASG. So what I'm trying to do there is clients assume there's a presupposition that you're good at your job. That's why they've hired you, right? They expect that you can do the engineering and deliver the drawings and the reports and the design solutions, right? But the real question is, on top of that, what is it like to work with you as a team leader, as a firm? What is the client experience like? So what I'm doing is storyboarding out the client experience journey from like asking for a proposal, from like being served during the job to closing out the job. What are the touch points? So if you say like that, the presentations, once you get the RFP in, the, the proposal is a marketing document. I know you think it's a commercial document and it is. It's also a marketing document. The clients are judging you every step of the way. What are your documents like? What are my interactions like with you? Do you serve me? Do you meet your deadlines? Is it a good experience? You know, like some people you meet and they just like mood hoovers. They suck the life out of you and it's a negative experience. You can't have a client experience you like that. So my point is every, how do you do something is how you do everything. If you do a shitty phone call, and I'm a client, I'm assuming you're doing a shitty job for me. If you send me an email without a title that's badly written and got spelling mistakes, I'm assuming that's how you do your job. Right. So the client experience, it's not enough just to be good at engineering and design and deliver that. You've also got to let the client have a good experience. They've got to come out every time they interact with you on a call or a meeting or a report or a presentation. They've got to come out feeling to themselves, yeah, I made the right decision hiring ASG or Stantec or whoever, right? You know, years ago, uh, I'll never forget uh, at the previous firm, a senior vice president, great guy, um, Paul Meyer. You know, he, my last name's Myers, is Myers, yeah. he's a brother from another mother. Eternal. <laughs> he, used to, he used to say to me, he's like, he goes, Marcus, he goes, the firm's either really good at marketing or they're really good at delivering a job. And I used to say, well, I get to be both. He goes, it's like doesn't really exist. Otherwise, they'd be they'd be the champions of the world. Exactly. I kept on I kept on thinking about this from that day on. Yeah. And to this point where it's just like, I think sometimes maybe the reason why, maybe the reason why an architect or engineer is not the best at this is because maybe maybe the sometimes they just don't they're not told to focus on it enough. And also, this is going to sound good or bad, but I, I think that in the world that we live in right now, everything is so fast, so quick. Yeah, just amazing. bang, bang, bang. I mean, it, I mean, we're we're ripping out proposals every day. It's like you're just trying to make sure that there's no bad word in there. You know what I mean? It's just like you're doing it so quick, so fast. Where sometimes, like, it's just it's just like rinse and repeat. And the, the one thing that we're all trying to get to, I think, is less time worried about basically proposal writing and all this other stuff, and more time with the client. It's, 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 it's like, you know, it's a hope, it's a want, it's a dream, right? But you're basically talking about, you know, it's, it's like, you should be thinking, of course, you should be thinking like the client, yeah the moment that you basically pick up that phone from the RFP, but, and the client's got 10 of you saying that you're the best going after it, but they're truly going to be judging your client experience that the, you're providing them. And I, I know it's going to sound crazy or bad or nobody wants to hear it, but in this world, I tell I tell a lot of the young engineers and architects I work with all the time, like, they are not engineers. They are owners. You have to basically, you can't expect them. And, and I've had a, I had a great owner one time said to me, if I knew all the answers that you're asking me, why do I need you? <laughs> yeah, I've had that conversation. <laughs> and I was like, when, when they say this to me all the time, I'm like, I get it. So then like, just go out and find it, help us find it, help us locate it, help us answer the questions we have, be our partner. And then of course, at the same time, you're automatically thinking more fee, but it's like, no. So then you have to basically understand what 
what the client member, not every client's the same. You know that yeah. every client has different expectations. And truthfully, you should spend, everybody should spend more time chasing the relationship than chasing that job. Absolutely. I mean, you touched, you said the right word back then was judgment. The, look, I've got news for you if you're listening to this. If you're running a job or you're a project manager or you're representing the firm in any way, you're being judged and you're an ambassador for your firm. Yes, you are. And how the client leaves that interaction is how they remember you. So if you half ask the phone call or the email or the report, it doesn't matter how much good work you've done before that, that is what they remember. Remember the old cliche, it takes 20 years to build a relationship to take 20 seconds to lose it. Correct. Absolutely. And it's a very understated, underplayed factor in yeah. a firm's success, right? Being clever and great at design and engineering is not enough. I tell people all the time, like, so always follow up, even if you don't think you have to always basically call them, even they didn't call you back, always hit yeah. the deliverables, even though they didn't give you enough information to hit the deliverables. Yeah. Never leave them in a place where they're like, what's going on? And I, 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 I try to delegate and communicate to my people all the time when I'm like, did you do it? Well, not yet. Do it. And then the automatic, it's like the next day, it's just like, ding, ding, ding. It's just like, they'll be like, so where are we at? I'm like, it's like you, you had that ESP. You're like, you know, they're going to hit you up. You know what I mean? It's just like, I think more people just need to get in tune with the extra sensitivity. It's like, what if, remember, what if you were the owner? What if they're paying you good money? Like, go above and beyond. And here's another thing that I tell people all the time. You know what I mean? It's like, it's going to sound weird, but if you're treating your job and all your clients better than you do, basically your loved ones, you got a problem. Treat your loved ones just as good or better than your clients, and then basically practice what you preach. I know it sounds weird, but make everybody a priority, not just the ones who basically pay your paycheck. Yeah, so you said something really important in there was don't have the client chase you. Be in front of the client's request. You phone him up and her up and say, hey, how are we doing on this, right? What if you did? I mean, it's going to sound weird. I'm changing it around. But what if you practice this? Practice what you preach. I know yeah. I'm like a kind of guy. But practice this with the people you love and practice with the people you work with. If yeah. you practice this and it becomes a routine in your life, you will always send that text to someone client yeah. you will always send that text to your girlfriend you will always oh, basically yeah. email and you will basically come home and you'll be like happy wife happy life yeah yeah you don't <laughs> uh, that's just to wrap this up why i always sort of wrap this up when i'm talking to people about it is just ask yourself what is it like to be served by you is it good or is it bad and inside you already know that answer right you if you're honest with yourself and you know it, you can actually like if, if, if you and like, you know, God were sitting in the next room, you're like, are you yeah. selfish? Maybe, yeah. you know, but I, I always basically, I tell people all the time, don't just practice like your storyboard at work, yeah. at home. And if it becomes part of your normal routine, you don't even have to worry about it anymore. You will literally deliver the highest quality service to everyone, people you work with and people basically you love. You will. That's, I mean, that's you know, a really good point. Because once you get this and it becomes an unconscious thing you do, it yeah. becomes who you are, right? Yeah, go the extra mile for everybody and anybody, and it doesn't matter. And then it doesn't actually become like an, a task. It just be, it becomes basically part of your process. Ooh, yeah, right? it becomes who you are. Because you know who doesn't get fired? The person that keeps clients happy and brings the work in. That person never gets fired, ever, 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 ever. Exactly. <laughs>